Welcome, and in this video course, we are looking at the CyberOps Associate Version 1 course. This course is going to cover the skills and knowledge needed for successfully handling the tasks and duties, responsibilities of an associate level security analyst working at a security operations center. The goal of this video series is to help prepare learners for the Cisco 200-201 certification. That's focusing on understanding the Cisco Cybersecurity Operation Fundamentals course, known as CBROPS. Module 15, Network Monitoring and its Tools. So the main objectives for this video is looking at an introduction to network monitoring and the monitoring tools themselves. So jump right on in, 15.1, Introduction to Network Monitoring. So network security topologies are going to have uh, different types of features that are attached to the network. They're going to have IDSs, IPSs, maybe some proxies, some filtering for um, email, for data files, maybe even some firewalls. Uh, that's just the hardware and the network component. There could also be software-based uh, or host-based things such as antivirus. You could have a anti-spam on machines or on server. You could have anti-malware on machines or on the network. So again, all of these are here to mitigate the threats attached to the network. Because again, at the end of the day, data that's flowing through the network must be secured and protected. So there's different methods and technologies that we can introduce to help automate some of this protection. And that includes the monitoring aspect, the alerting and the blocking of offensive content. For example, if I plug in a wireless access point in a classroom, it should the network should be robust enough to detect my wireless network and shut it down automatically. And there are Cisco products out there that would detect rogue access points and would limit traffic to that device. The larger the network, the more layers of protection that will be needed. And typically these larger networks are going to be more expensive. They're going to have more of a budget. So more of the feature rich products are going to be attached to these larger networks. Again, firewalls, IPSs are already going to be there. The interesting part is modern day or next generation firewalls and next generation IPSs can be uh, pre-configured with rules and they can also out of the box monitor traffic. The nice thing is you can take these pre-configured rules and you can compare it against custom rules. Let's say that I want to do a geo-based IP tagging rule. I want to see what countries are trying to access my network. Well, I can look at the pre-configured rule and I can look at my rule and I can use the pre-configured rule as a baseline to see what's uh, captured in their rule versus my rule. Basically, there is a way for us to match this traffic so that we can ensure that one, we're creating rules appropriately and two, the, match, uh, the matching traffic is handled according to the appropriate rule. And in part, an important very part of cybersecurity analyst is to review alerts, see what's happening. Alerts that were generated by the IDS or IPS or firewall logs or router logs or a SIM or SOAR. The, the interesting part here is the analyst's job is to take all of this massive input and see what's going on. Part of that means you're going to have to have a robust knowledge of networks, analytics, security, so that we understand which alerts are false positive, what alerts are actually meaningful. And that's part of what this course is preparing us for, is how to digest mass amounts of data and get to the meaning uh, aspect of it. All right, so let's go and let's talk method. The day-to-day -day operations of a network consists of typical traffic flow, data flowing through the network, things like bandwidth usage, uh, resource access on the LAN, uh, what devices are accessing what 
land based resources, file servers. All of this can be identified via patterns, and this is normal behavior. So when we start seeing abnormal behavior, that is when we need to be concerned. And there are plenty of networking tools out there that actually have an AI component that have learned baseline what normal traffic would look like for the day, the week, the month, the year. That way, because that's the interesting part, is normal traffic on Monday may be different than normal traffic on Tuesday. Normal traffic on Monday, first Monday of the month, may be different than the, the second Monday of the month. However, the beginning Monday of each month may be very similar. So these are patterns that programs can learn. So we're not just comparing apples and apples or apples and oranges. We're really comparing a Galatian apple to a Galatian apple. Not all Mondays are the same. So part of that is understanding what behavior is actually classified as normal. So to determine the normal network behavior, monitoring has to be implemented. And again, we're talking day, week, month, quarter, year. That way we can see what is normal. Uh, things like IDSs or packet analyzers, NetFlow analyzers, if your network actually uses SNMP, all can be used for monitoring. All of these will generate logs and traffic and heuristics. The problem is, this may not capture real traffic that we need to be analyzing. So to do that, we have two common methods to look at traffic. Test port access, TAPS, or switch port analyzers, SPANs. The SPANs are gonna be used for like port mirroring. Basically, this will allow us to mirror network traffic for us to be able to analyze. That way, we have a better understanding of the flow of traffic or data on our network. So here's an example of a network tap. The network tap is going to be going, uh, sending and receiving data to a monitoring device, typically a server, not a laptop. And that's going to uh, analyze and document all of the network traffic. It's going to clone it and send it through. It's passive and it's splitting the device implemented uh, in between the infrastructure and the core network. Normally the core network being the outside bound layer 3 device where uh, external data is going to be sent. It could also be on the LAN side if we're looking at LAN uh, data connection. So it really depends on the network for placement here. The tab will forward all traffic, including physical layer errors. It will record everything passively and will transmit it simultaneous to its destination and to the appropriate monitoring devices. So the transmitting TX data stream from the internal router and the receiving data stream for the internal router on separate dedicated channels. This way, we're not confusing or cross-contaminating the transmit and receive connections. Pros and cons for here, we're not going to allow you know 20 data links to this monitoring device. There are ways to do this uh, appropriately as the network scales. Normally, we are looking at re uh, receive and transmit separate, but we may also then separate the transmit for internal traffic versus external traffic. It really just depends on how robust we want our tap to be, and again, cost. This process of separating transmit and receive data ensures that all data arrives at the monitoring device in a more real-time manner. Taps are a fail-safe, which means that the traffic between the firewall and internal router is not affected. It does this passively. It clones the data, whether it have errors or not, it clones and transmits the data. So let's go and look at our traffic mirroring and spans. We have a few different span terms. Ingress, egress. Ingress is going into the switch. 
egress is traffic leaving the switch. Source and destination. The source span port is the source port that are monitored as traffic enters them and is replicated or mirrored to the destination port. The destination port is the port that is mirrored, uh, mirroring the source ports. The destination span port often connects to the analyzer. So, in clever ways, essentially we have a analyzer attached to a destination port. We can classify what ports we want to listen to. Those are the source ports. The source ports, as data is received on them, will mirror, clone, the traffic so that one packet or one frame will be sent to the original destination and one frame will be sent to the destination span port. They're going to be duplicates of each other. They're mirroring each other. This is a special te technique that does this and this is called port mirroring. And you have to employ by ba uh, bypassing network segments imposed by network switches. That way, if we have certain VLANs, for example, the destination port may be a trunk port, for example. It may be a specialized port mode that allows it to receive data from all different VLANs. Again, we are receiving a copy of the frame that's received on the appropriate source span ports. Again, we've already looked through the four main terms, so let's see this in action. Here we have a switch. We have an ingress traffic coming on FA, FA01. Well, that could be the inbound source port, where the egress port is FA02. That's going to be egressing traffic. Well, that could also be a source port. Even though the source port is the egress, it doesn't matter capturing all data traffic. So what we would do is the port going towards the span port server or management server would be classified as the destination SAN port. So any port that is data is being received on is a source port. The one port that is going towards the management server is going to be the destination SAN port. And again, a variation of SANs called remote uh, spans are out there. This enables a network administrator to use flexible VLANs to monitor traffic for remote switches as well. So we can actually have cloned traffic sent from a remote network back to a main network or a headquartered based network. These are called R spans. All right, so hopping in to five or 15.2, we're gonna be looking at the tools for monitoring. So what are some of those common tools? So you should already be fairly familiar with a network protocol analyzer, such as like Wireshark or TCP dump. Maybe you're not familiar with them, but I mean, if you're not, we're gonna be working with Wireshark quite a bit. We also have NetFlow. And we also have a SIM, a Security Information and Event Management System. SIM is going to be probably where the analyst spends the majority of their time because as a SOC analyst, you're looking at the alerts, the logs, and that SIM is what kind of allows us to essentially manage everything. That's the main monitoring tool. So it's also common for security analysts to rely on log files and things uh, that use SNMP, assuming that we have that turned on and configured, but log files are definitely going to be one of the big ones. All of those make up the main tools that a SOC analyst would be using. So here is a old version of Wireshark. This is a network protocol analyzer and it allows us to sniff packets. It is the a graphical interface for a filtered program. TCP dump, however, is a command line utility which you have to know all of the switches and the, uh, the command syntax to actually be able to run it. Where with Wireshark, it's graphical, but you still have to know how to 
filter the content that you want. I've already done separate videos on Wireshark, so if you need any, if you have any questions on Wireshark, leave a message. I will send you the videos that I have on Wireshark, how to use it, how to function, how to filter, how to actually look at and analyze packets and frames and segments or datagrams based off of whatever you're needing. Because that's one of the problems with these tools is information overload. You're given so much, so you need to understand what's going on, how to filter certain content. Again, TCP dump is a command line version of a tool similar to Wireshark. They're not exactly the same, but they are similar in its functionality. You just have to understand the command switches that get the program to filter based off of what you want. And we have labs for these as well. NetFlow is a Cisco IOS technology that provides statistical on packet flow through layer 3 devices, router or layer 3 switch. NetFlow is the standard for collecting operational data in a IP based network. It also can be used for network and security monitoring, planning, traffic analysis, and traffic shaping when appropriate. It provides a complete audit trail for basically every IP that flows through the network. While NetFlow uh, will store information in a local cache of the device, it should also be configured to forward that content to a NetFlow data collector. When we're talking log management, where we're talking SIM, where we're talking uh, port mirroring, you're going to notice that almost everything is going to tell you to send it to a machine, a collector for, anal uh, for analyzing. So NetFlow is no different. NetFlow collector will have a, a device, a management machine on the network that everything will be forwarding the NetFlow cache to. So again, NetFlow can monitor application connected by tracking the data, bytes, and packet counts for individual application flows. It can push the statistics to a NetFlow connector, whether it be internal or external to the network. Cisco also has what's called stealth watch collectors that will collect NetFlow statistics to perform advanced functions such as flow stitching, duplication, or NAT stitching. Again, this is all outside the normal scope for a SOC 1 analyst, but flow stitching is a group of interval entries into a single flow. Flow duplication, it filters duplicate incoming uh, entries from multiple NetFlow clients. And NAT stitching basically simplifies the flow of NAT entries. So here again, all we're doing is collecting content, collecting data statistics so we can analyze them. As a SOC analyst, one of the most important experience that you will need to gain is understanding and how to work with a SIM. Again, that security information event management or managing tool is paramount. SIMs include basic functions for forensics analysis, correlation, aggregation, and reporting. Realistically, the correlation and the reporting is what makes a SIM so important. The ability to correlate uh, logs and events so that you can detect uh, possible threats before they're occurring, while they're occurring, even post threats. If you're understanding how to read the SIM and the logs correctly, this becomes a crucial part of network monitoring. And again, the reporting is also equally important with a SIM. Sad part is this is one area that many SOC analysts don't have the experience uh, when they go into the field. So this is one where SOC individuals need to brush, brush up on specifically those SIM skills. So what is SOAR? I keep seeing the word SOAR throughout this reading. Well, SOAR is a orchestration, automation, and response tool that is used to enhance a SIM. The interesting part is the SOAR will help the security team 
with the investigating of the security incidences and they provide additional add-ons for data gathering, information gathering, and other functionality depending on what type of enhancements your sim allows. Keep in mind, not all sims are created equal. Some sims are actually extremely bare bone and cheap. Some sims are really flexible, very module, but it really just depends on price that you're paying for it. There are some sims that are free, but you're limited to the features that they offer. So the SOAR solution, again, provides some form of case management, the possibility, not saying that all SOAR solutions do this, just within the Cisco realm, normally the SOAR solutions will provide case management, allowing the personnel to research and investigate the different incidences, frequencies, and other threat intelligence. Some SOAR uh, enhancements allow for some form of AI to help in the detection of incidences and this then helps with the incident analysis and response. Again, not all do, so you need to keep that in mind. Part of what SOAR is supposed to be doing is using the automation function to automate complex uh, incident response procedures and investigations. Basically, if you know something occurs and it can be automated, the SOAR solution is what's going to help automate those features. This basically will offer a dashboard and reports to the document, the incident response, so that the key SOC individuals and the key SOC performance indicators can be used, one, to make sure the security of the network is still there and provides us uh, the clarity of what that incident actually occurred. And that means looking at the key performance indicators to verify network functionality and network security. At the end of the day, SIMs and SOARs are put in place to help analysts respond to threats and other uh, incidences. If an incident occurs, SOARs and a SIM provide the ability for the analyst to respond quicker. Since we talked about costs, uh, there are some SIMs that will use an open source product, uh, Security Onion. This will include the uh, ELK suite for SIM functionality. So ELK is an uh, acronym, Elastic Search Log Stash in Kibben. The uh, Elastic Search is a document-oriented full-text search engine. The Log Stash is a pipeline process system that contains input to output with option filters. So you can filter content. And Kibben is a browser-based analytics and search dashboard for Elasticsearch. So it's the application that sits on top of the text search engine. For example, SolarWinds Security Event Manager and Splunk Enterprise Security are two of the more popular SIMs used by SOX. I would not say SolarWinds anymore, but Splunk definitely is. Splunk does do free training, and I've already done videos on Splunk training. Again, these are just two popular sims. That's kind of an oxymoron. It really depends on the organization and circumstances. I've seen Alien Vault, very common. It's very low uh, cost in, uh, in its entry, and it's easy to configure. So it really just depends on your budget, your organization, and other requirements those dictate what type of SIM you would be obtaining or using. All right, so lab time. We have a lab looking at logging network traffic using a sniffer and packet tracer. So moving on, we have our summary. What did we learn today? So we looked at the purpose of SIMs. We looked at the purpose of network security analysts, and again, it's all about mitigating threats, understanding the hardware of the network, how they generate logs, how to analyze those logs to a limited degree, and the tools that are used to analyze. We looked at things like packet sniffers. Uh, we looked at 
defining uh, port mirroring and span ports. We looked at SIMs and SORs and kind of the, those features. And we also looked at NetFlow's functionality. That's all I had for this chapter, so I wanted to thank you. And again, if you have any questions or concerns, please leave a comment. Thank you.